Hello, Flourish. It's great to be here with you today. I am Mindy Kiker, and I have the pleasure of welcoming Helen Baker. Welcome, Helen. Hello. Nice to see you again. All the way from South Africa. That's why her accent sounds so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> So, Helen, could you tell us a little bit about your family? Okay. So, I am married to Kevin, and we've got three children, Daniel, Jasmine, and Amy. Um, we are a homeschooling family, so we've been doing that since Dan was in grade one, and he just finished his last, the last of his schooling this year. Oh, congratulations. So, we've gone all the way through. Yeah. Wow. So two more to go, but it's it's been a... An interesting journey, a tough journey, but a good journey. Yeah. 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 And it is interesting that you live in South Africa. And so quick, quick geography <laughs> lesson, because Americans aren't so hot on their geography. <laughs> <laughs> Africa is a continent. It contains 54 Not a country. <laughs> not a, it contains 54 <laughs> countries. And South Africa <laughs> is the independent nation that is down at the bottom. Yeah. The south being the that key word. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us, I can imagine growing up in South Africa provided some interesting childhood experiences. What are some of your fondest memories? Fondest memories, I think, include a lot of outdoor stuff. My dad yeah. was a canoeist, so we spent yeah. a lot of time on riverbanks as children growing up. And, yeah, j just general outdoors. We would take long road trips around the country. Um, so, yeah, very fond memories of that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, with the whole apartheid thing, mm -hmm. you know, there's some interesting memories that come back to do with that. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully... I kind of missed most of that. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty oblivious to it as a child. Um, and then, yeah, 94 came in the same sort of year that I turned, uh, I can't even remember, 18 or 19. So, mm -hmm. yeah, um, we, we've kind of, well, I've grown up in the, in the post of my stage, which has been very interesting. Blessing. Lots yeah. of challenges, but it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the cultural variety in South Africa is staggering. There are 11 mm. official languages. <laughs> so that's a lot mm. of different culture groups all trying yeah. to identify with being what it means to be South African. So, yeah. um, but what a, what a rich, beautiful, you know, tragic, mm. but just glorious country. Yeah. And the physical beauty of that country oh, is, I don't think people can quite imagine. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the vi news footage that we see of South Africa tends to be um, something rather tragic and not so beautiful. But um, the 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 mountains and the rivers and the even yeah. the deserts and the meadows and the countryside is just so stunning and. Cape Town itself. It oh my word. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of live. beaches, mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got everything here. Yeah, you really do. You live in a beautiful, beautiful place. So yeah. we knew each other in South Africa when we were living in Peter Maritzburg together. And I was trying to remember yeah. when when we would have first met. Because did you come from Cape Town? I can't remember. I was trying to. Oh, I was trying to think about it, yeah. and I actually can't remember when it was even that we would have met. But there was what an year overlap. was what year was Daniel born? He was born in ninety nine, but we were back okay. in Cape Town by then. Oh yeah, so that's right. it must have been before then. Wow. So yeah, <laughs> it's well. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. We've known each other yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah. and reconnected. But only recently Yes. yes, which has been such a, yeah. such a um, pleasure to have this be one of the, um, one of the unexpected consequences of Flourish <laughs> is to reconnect with lots of old friends. So yeah, it's been what a, a pleasure. And you have written for us a beautiful piece. Thank you, Helen, for pouring out your heart to us um, about what it means to flourish. And you used Psalm 92 as your launching yes. point. Would you read us that passage and then tell us why that spoke to you? Sure. 
Um, so I did Psalm 92 from verse 12 to 15. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green. Mm-hmm. And one of the other versions said they are ever fat and flourishing, which ah. I love. <laughs> uh, to declare that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in oh, him. That's beautiful. And, yeah, the, the, the whole word flourish for me has been, uh, it's been a journey since the beginning of the year, actually, when you mm. invited me to join Flourish. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want to. I, I wasn't in a place of flourishing. Uh, and I said to God, I don't want to do that. And I, I nearly hit ignore. And then I said, no, I won't do that. I'll, I'll just physically ignore it. I, I just won't hit anything. Yeah. And it sat there and it sat there and it sat there. And I was like, okay, I, I just have to do this. God, you've got your, there's something here. So I hit, oh. I hit the button and I accepted. And it's just <laughs> been an amazing journey since then. <laughs> oh. And then one of the flourish scriptures was Psalm 92, verse 13. They mm-hmm. are planted in the house of the Lord and they flourish in the courts of our God. Yeah. So I kind of had this in my back of my mind. And then there's been a whole long journey with this word flourish, which now is not, that's too much to share for now. Uh-huh. But I kept coming back to the scripture. Um, mm. which prompted me to start looking at what does it look like to flourish like a palm tree? Yeah. What does it look like to grow like a cedar in Lebanon? Yeah. And yeah, I just took the journey from there. Wow. So yeah, that, that's kind of been that, that, that's been an amazing scripture for me oh. this year. And you have been such a faithful declare follower. <laughs> and I just, yeah. I have so enjoyed getting your little snippets of feedback as as a verse just speaks to you during that week yeah. and how, <laughs> how rewarding just to see in all our lives, how one verse of scripture meditated on for a week can speak into all our different circumstances. Mm. And you have yeah. had quite dramatic circumstances with um, a terrible drought that yeah. South Africa and especially your Western area of the country has mm. been experiencing for a long time now. Yeah, it has been a long time, and it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and Cape Town, we, we usually have winter rains, but so far there's been very little. We're in winter now, but so far there's been very little rain. And, yeah, the dams oh, are nearly Jesus. empty. <laughs> and you had yeah. an experience where you were walking along the cracked, dry mm. dam bed. Which, and when we say dam, that's like the lake. That, that's the lake okay your the, lake yeah, yeah we, we always the dam is the wall to us and then the oh, lake okay. the lake is the water that fills up behind the dam wall okay. so you were walking across the dry yeah. lake bed or dam bed and the lord spoke to you um, yeah it was amazing it's at my dad's place it's in the middle of wilderness and god i was walking there now his place is miles it's 14 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles um, from his nearest neighbor. So, and I was walking and I was just saying, God, I'm so alone. It's so amazing because I was enjoying just the space. And he said to me, you are never alone. You are never alone. Um, Yeah, no, it was, it was amazing. Such an amazing experience. And to be physically in the midst of something so desolate, and yet mm. to feel God's presence and have him speak that to you, that it gives yeah. me goosebumps to just <laughs> think of how beautiful that was. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it was. <clears throat> and just describe, you were describing to me a little bit of the, just what the water restrictions have meant. You're like two months away from the, mm. the water supply for Cape Town being gone. Yeah. And so now... You guys so, are experiencing, so the, yeah, what lack of water means just for your everyday life. Describe mm. some of those, what you're having to do right now. Yeah, so, so, so the dam that feeds, or well, the lake that feeds mm. Cape Town, um, they reckon it's currently at 10% mm. um, water capacity, usable water. So it means that when we shower, we've got to have buckets in the showers so that we can flush toilets with that water. Mm. Um, washing dishes and washing vegetables, that water goes outside to go onto the plants. So it, it's quite dramatic. And they're asking now that every person uses less than 100 liters a day. Um, oh. But, yeah, for, like, I, I'm basically not Basically, four sure. liters in a gallon. That's like, what, 10, 20 gallons? 
Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure the conversion for, for so. everything, like yeah, brushing teeth everything. and a few drips of water. Yeah, yeah. So you shower, you put the water on, you turn the water off, you soak down, you turn the water on, you 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 run it off. It's it's quite something. Um, we, you're not allowed to clean cars, you're not allowed to fill up swimming pools, none of that. Mm. Oh my goodness. So when the Bible talks about water, <clears throat> it is, we just don't often experience how critical it is to life and how without it, we really cannot survive. I mean, mm -mm. And, and at the end of the day, no. if the last little bit of water for drinking, you know, one of my favorite um, history books is Unbroken by Lauren Hillenbrand, the, um, the World okay, War II. So nice. It was about a um, World War II prisoners of war who went to a Japanese um, internment camp. And um, so when they're on their raft, they were on their raft for like 100 days or something crazy. And that, that whole situation of just not having water to drink is mm. quite shocking. And Jesus is our living water. Yeah. It really makes the picture. We have to drink from him. Mm -hmm. We do. Yeah. So yeah, in, in, it becomes really real. Yeah, it does. Well, mm. I will continue. I was praying for you and for your dad because his water tanks were empty. What's happening with that? Yeah. Um, they're shipping, water, well, not shipping, they're driving water in for him now. And he's got a couple of, of water tanks and a borehole pump that go into a couple of um, little reservoirs. But the water is so brack, um, very, very salty. So... Mm -hmm. If he takes the lid off the water tanks, there, there's a layer of salt that's like that thick. Oh my so he can't goodness. drink it. It's it's fine for showering and that, but yeah. but but and for cooking, he says oh, everything just comes out tasting salty. <laughs> um, but for drinking it, for drinking water, he's they, they're bringing water in for him now. Wow! So I was praying when you first sent that notice, and then I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll keep. I'm that's gonna fine. put it back on my list. <laughs> Oh, thank and, you. Uh, yeah. Um, so in your you in the um article or the devotional that you wrote for us, I love this comment that you made. I'm just gonna read a few sentences from what you wrote. You said, a common problem in today's world is that we feel the world's expectations. We have so much and so many to compare ourselves with, and we constantly fall short. Our definition of success and flourishing is found in the outward appearance. So that when we go through hard times, we feel like failures. We look at what is not being accomplished in our lives and we forget the ultimate purpose of our lives to give glory to God and to be found in him. Um, I can relate with that. <laughs> this even being part of something called flourish has been fascinating for me. Uh, I think yeah. I mentioned that when I, when I phone my parents on the phone, my dad loves to say, hi, honey, are you flourishing? <laughs> and, um, and sometimes that, um, that feels like it almost puts this pressure on me to always be well or always be happy or feel like everything's always okay. But the more I've processed that, I have realized that very much like what you say, Flourishing is not about everything being okay, but it's knowing who has everything. God has everything in his hands. Yeah. And then I flourish because I have confidence, not in myself, but in him. So it sounds yeah. like you've been through a similar journey. So tell us a little bit about what that means to you. Wow. Our, our journey has been very tough for the last five years. Um, Kevin was retrenched from from his job and he just hasn't managed to find anything else um, so he's had odd jobs here and there and he's making enough to feed us but we, we can't afford to rent a home so oh. we had to move out of where we were renting five years ago and our community has been amazing our church community we've, mm. we've stayed with people we've passed that we've looked at looked at after people's homes um, but we have moved 57 times in five years <gasps> and it's just been very, very painful and oh. lots of tears, lots of heartbreak. Um, 
And yeah, so when I say that, you know, we feel the world's expectations and one of those expectations is that you will stay in a place and have a home um, and be able to invite people in and yeah. even just, you know, church expectations, you know, have a small group in your home, things like that. Yeah. And when you go through something like this, you, you start questioning yourself, you know, is it sin in my life? Is it generational curses? What is right. it? And you keep coming back to God and saying, what is it? Why? This is so hard. And yeah, I just really went through a process of, of just everything dying. You know, mm. when, when, when you look at everything and your hopes and your dreams and everything that you, you, you sort of thought your life would turn out like, hasn't been like that and yeah and then just those expectations but in it I've had yeah. so many testimonies of God's goodness the yeah. little things the little provisions the the on the way things that he has done yeah and I look at that and you know and then for me just being able to give testimony to God's goodness in yeah. the middle of the hardship has been just so incredible because I, I think often we as people, we want to give testimony at the end of it. We want to say, yes, yes God has provided and he yes. has done this and he's done that and we've got the job in the house and, and everything sorted. Mm -hmm. But actually, it, God's been showing me how actually the flourishing comes from being rooted in him and it doesn't matter what the storms are. It doesn't matter what, what's going on. He yeah. is still my rock. He is yes. still my stability. He is still faithful um you know just at the end of that psalm it says to declare that the lord is upright he is my rock mm. that has been my experience he is my stability my mm. rock my everything under my feet um so yeah life life the circumstances haven't changed it's still so hard we still have to move again we still have to go mm. through stuff we've got three children how does that look but god is good our children are stable they know mm. him there, there's a, a sense of in it all he is awesome mm -hmm. and that he wants to use us and use our story to encourage other people yes i think that's when when you realize that you you are through by going through hardship and coming through um with a confidence in who he is um, then you have something to offer to others um, as you say the story the testimony that's so beautiful, but hard one. Okay. Okay, we're back to Rick Courtney. We've had a little technical pause there, but uh, we are back. And um, I wanted Helen to just tell us a little bit about a beautiful poem that you wrote at the end of your piece. It, I was just aching as I read it because I know that words like that come from a very deep place that mm. the Lord has met you and it's so it's so beautiful when he meets us in brokenness and we can testify mm. to his glory but none of us really wants to go there and yet when we meet him in those dry desperate dark lonely broken places we meet him in a way that we don't anywhere else so yeah just tell us about that poem it's it's beautiful oh thank you yeah that that really came i was probably at my lowest in the beginning of this year um mm. just feeling like it's so hard to go on when you haven't got hope and mm. when everything that you've believed and trusted and looked for and the, the, the things that God's spoken, the, the seeds of these plants in your heart just seem to be coming to nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and you cry out to God and it seems like there's an empty heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the first two verses of that really came out mm. of, of brokenness. And I, I don't usually consider myself a poet at all, um, but mm -hmm. I... I that they're just lying in a field of broken dreams and that's what mm. it felt like and, and just where, where hope and heart and everything is just broken. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and even it says, and the things that you've spoken seem to die. And for me, it really had seemed like everything that I was trusting God for, there was just nothing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, look, looking, looking at the cross and just going, Father, obviously you just don't care. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know, 
And then where, where we live, um, we're close to the beach and I took a walk the one day and I was walking along the, the, the pathway on the rocks and I spent 10 minutes going out saying to God, well, that's it. I, I just can't talk to you anymore. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. And I spent the, the entire 10 minutes telling God how I wasn't going to talk to him anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> and I got to the end of the path and I suddenly realized, oh, well, that was a bit pointless <laughs> because I literally spent the entire time talking to him. And I stood there and it was, it was really a turning point for me, just that decision. Mm. Do I or do I not believe to yeah. right down to the core of my very being, you know, because we, mm. we know God is and we know he's our rock and we know he's our savior and we know all these things. But when you get totally to that place of hopelessness, mm. that, what is there? And I couldn't even not speak to him for 10 minutes. And <laughs> I got to the end and I turned around and I was walking back and just looking down at our valley. Um, yeah. And it, it was sunset and the mountains sort of oh. layering upon layering. And, I, and I, I looked at them and I thought, well, if I choose not to believe, mm. then how do I account for this? Wow. How do I account for what I'm seeing? Mm. Because evolution is so obviously not, not, not truth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think for me that was just rock bottom. I turn to walk away. That line is in my poem. I turn to walk away. Mm. And even in my walking away, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also just that realization mm. that God knows where we are. Yeah. And even in our turning, he looks at us and he knows that we have to come back to him yeah. because we actually know the truth. Um, yeah. And, and that I speak of that ember of hope. Um, mm -hmm. you know that, that, that little experience. yeah the little yeah. coal and and even though the, it seems like there's no more hope it seems like there's no fruit on the vine it seems like there's no blossoms that that actually all comes out of Habakkuk and Habakkuk 3 yeah um, it was just okay <clears throat> in spite of the fact that there seems to be nothing I'm choosing to trust I'm choosing to praise I'm choosing to keep walking and I mean I've, I've referred to the whole walk with the word flourish um, mm -hmm. and that has come up firstly with your group and then there was another prophetic morning I went yeah. to and then I went to a conference I don't think I told you this I went to a conference and the the conference gift was a little box I think I've actually got it here somewhere yeah sorry there's something on top of it so the conference gift was this box and on it, it says, just a girl in a field. And so I opened it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just so amazing. Um, I opened this box. This is in the middle of this whole walk with God. And there's this pair of gardening gloves. And inside the box, <laughs> I don't know if you can see it there, is a, is a little scripture verse. <gasps> And it says, stand tall, stand tall and, and flourish. flourish wherever he has planted you. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, God, three times you've given me this word. Three times you're saying flourish wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's in whatever circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, even when I started yeah. writing that poem, <laughs> I was saying, God, it's not complete yet. It's yeah. not complete yet. It's not yeah. complete yet. Because I know it doesn't end with me walking away. I know it doesn't end with an ember of hope. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, and so the last two verses of that came, well, actually, I will look on seeds that God has planted in yeah. the field of my life. Um, the things that seem dead. He will bring to life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he reigns. He pours life. And, and that, that is, is my heart, is, is that actually everyone who's going through suffering will mm. be able to read that and say, I can identify with portions of that, but oh, God yes. can, can bring life and, and life from it. Mm. So, yeah, so th that's just for me really exciting is to be able to say, in this hard time, God is my yeah. rock. In this hard time, he is good, he is righteous, and he will bring those seeds um, mm. to pass, the, those things that he has promised. It looks like there's nothing. And I have to be quite honest, there are still things I, I, I look at some of the promises and I go, okay, yes. I have faith, God, that, that you can yeah. raise it up. Right now, it's too painful to look at. 
but I know yeah. that he has planted them. And so even that, there's a bit of faith in me now for those things. I can mm -hmm. still trust him with those things that are so hard and so difficult. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Well, I know that is going to encourage a lot of people, Helen. And thank you for being so vulnerable to share that, not when it's all done and wrapped up in a pretty bow and look at, look at my life and how God has restored everything, but look at my heart and how he has restored everything yeah. in here. And, yeah. and this, is coming, this is coming into line, but I, I'm not telling God how long it's supposed to take. I'm not telling him what it's supposed to look like. I'm mm -hmm. looking at those mountains. I'm looking at that valley. I'm looking at that sea and that sh the rocks and the shore. And I'm knowing that this is my God. This mm. is my God. Yeah. And yeah. he is. He, he is creator. Yeah. And that, that, that basic bottom line. He loves me. He mm -hmm. created me. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Oh, so. Helen, thank you for <laughs> writing for us and sharing with us through your words. And <clears throat> I'm sure this will be the first of many times. I think we could have quite a few conversations about this that would really bless yeah. a lot of women. So just yeah. on behalf of all the Flourish women who are going to be enjoying this um, testimony from you, I just thank you, Helen, for your um, vulnerability and your transparency. That's a pleasure, and thanks so much for, for inviting me to, mm. to write further. It's, it's been such a pleasure. Oh, good. Well, more of that too. Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you, you, Helen. Bless your family. Okay. Bye-bye.